Dak impressed me at least as much off the field yesterday as he impressed me on the field on Sunday. You are witnessing before your very eyes the arrival of a leader of this football team who acts like, plays like, handles himself like he's been doing this for a long, long time. And I think he won over at least a portion more of the locker room yesterday with these comments. He basically said, and we couldn't use the whole quote, but he went on to say that Dez knows he should have brought that ball down. I think you knew it. I said it first thing out of the box on Monday morning. It's a game changer by a receiver who I defended to the point on Friday telling you that I would take him over Odell Beckham Jr. And on Sunday, I was wrong about that. Mm -hmm. He made me eat my own words, and it's time for him to rise and time for him to shine because the quarterback has to run the huddle. Dez can't run the huddle. Dez can't dictate the offense. It's time for a quarterback, be it Tony Romo or, or Dak Prescott, to stand up to Des Bryant. And I think publicly, sort of through the back door, message-wise, through the media, Dak just sent a message to Des. This is my football team. And his bottom line was, if Des is the read, Des will get the football. Now, I said it, and I'm going to say it again. I wish Dez would be the primary read on, a, on several early easy throws. Mm -hmm. Little quick slant, little quick hitch, just to get him in the flow. But that's a whole other issue. That's a play caller issue. That's not a quarterback issue. The quarterback still has to do what's correct at that point in the football game. If he's open, he gets the football. If he's not, I'm throwing to somebody who is open. So, again, I think you're seeing Dak Prescott arrive. I didn't like the comment. I'm because, sure you did. You know what? I'm, I'm not surprised. Because I think he threw his all-pro pro, pro Bowl receiver under the bus, and he was driving the bus. I look at it like this in sports. It is okay to lie if it will spare a teammate great embarrassment or harm. He basically said, look, if you catch that touchdown, we win this ball game. Okay, Cole Beasley dropped. You said he on Monday. He you did. said he Cole did. Beasley dropped the touchdown. Drop, but drive. he didn't mention that. No. Jason Witten dropped a pass in the fourth quarter, got Jerry Jones thinking about hanging curtain okay, in the building. Quick, quick point, quick point of order. He was asked about Dez catching only one ball for eight mm -hmm. yards, so he was responding just yeah. to a Dez question, but go ahead. He targeted those other two guys 26 times between the two. He targeted Dez five times. A better way for him to have handled this situation, we need to play better offensively. I need to throw it better. We need to catch it better. We need to block better. We need to run better. As an offensive unit, we can't settle for field goals. We must put the ball into the end zone. That's the way you handle that situation. But you know what's happened here, Skip? He, you, and along with everybody else, is telling Mr. Prescott how great he's going to be and how great he already is. And he's starting to feel himself. So you know what? If I'm Dez Bryant, I'm going to repay him back. The first time he throws an interception and we lose the ball game, I'm going to say, you know, my quarterback needs to throw it to me a little more than opposed to the opposing team. And I want, let, I want to let him know that I heard what you said and I want you to feel how I felt. Because you don't do that. I played with John for nine years. John Elway. John yep. Elway. Mm -hmm. And Hall of Fame quarterback. And he never embarrassed me. I never embarrassed him. He threw a ball high one day, and I tried to catch it, and I got my bell rung. And he asked me, he said, why'd you try and catch that ball? I said, because you threw it. And I always, I always wanted him to have confidence in me that if he threw me the ball, I'm going to make a play for it. I never wanted him to worry about, well, I can't throw it here because it might get intercepted. Shannon's not going to make a play on the ball. I'm going to make a play, but don't hang me out. I dropped a pass, and this was probably one of the lowest moments of my career. In 1991, Skip, in the south end zone of Old Mile High Stadium. Yep, I know it. I dropped a touchdown against the Raiders that would have given us home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Mm. And Was we, it in the horseshoe end, the, yep, the loud end? The yep. south yep. end zone. We ended up having to go to Buffalo. We lost in the championship I game 10-7. Well. Mm -hmm. He could have said, you know, hey, that was the difference in the ball game. You know, who knows? It's, it's going to probably come down to us in Buffalo for home field advantage. He didn't do that. But what he did do is that he pulled me to the side. And he says, I've seen you make that play too many times in practice. He said, you're better than that. 
I appreciated that. He could have, and there was nothing I could have done. I was in my second year, and here's a guy that's already been to three Super Bowls. Right. He was an MVP, and nobody would have batted a nine. But he understood the dynamic of a team. Skip, you never want to destroy that dynamic. I got it. And as a rookie quarterback, stay in your place, hold up. And besides, you thinking you playing all this, you only average five yards per attempt. That was the third lowest of any quarterback in the National Football League. Only Case Keenum and Blaine Gabbert were, were so. Okay, but uh, that's not his fault. That he should have done that on Sunday. On Sunday, just dink it and dunk it and keep it between the lines. Just keep it going straight. Don't turn the ball over. Did they turn the ball? They nope. did not. Okay. So you you help make my case because your Elway anecdote, as great as it was, your punchline to it was you were in your second year and he had won Super Bowls, right? right? Yes. Been to three. Yes, right. been okay. three. Been to three Super Bowls. Okay, the dynamic completely different because you're the kid there. You, he's helping you. He's taking you under his wing. Mm -hmm. This is the kid trying to take over a football team that badly needs him to Can't, be the leader yep. until Tony Romo gets back. There, there, unless um, now I can see if it's even Andrew Luck. E Think about it. They got rid of Marshall Falk because they wanted to make it Peyton Manning's team, who was the first overall draft pick. And he also had Marvin Harrison. So you actually think that Dak Prescott is going to be able to come in and take over a football team that has Jason Witten, who probably is going to end up in the Hall of Fame. You will. Uh, and uh, Dez Bryant, who is a Pro Bowl, All-Pro player. He's, that's not going to happen. Skip, okay. you know how this works, Skip. Okay. A rookie must stay in his place. 